Look at all the beans. My goodness. I didn't expect all of these to germinate. I had pulled some beans out of some pods that were over mature as I was snapping my beans for canning and decided that I would uh, plant another round of beans. So most of these are pole beans in the center there where it's the thickest. Those are actually long beans. So it'll be really interesting to see how they do up here in the main garden. It has been quite the interesting growing year for us in Georgia. And many of you across the country have experienced a lot of weird weather as well. We started out our spring much colder than usual. And so a lot of things didn't get the start that they usually do and really didn't do much. And then things that I planted later on seem to have been doing much better. So you just never know. Planting early sometimes seems like a good idea, but sometimes planting later can turn out to be better results. This is a late summer planting of beans. Our beans are still producing down in Miss Elsie's garden, so we're still picking and canning beans, but this will give us a nice good flush when those are probably gonna be dying out. I still haven't planted anything here. These are bags of compost that we'll be planting some fall stuff into. The watermelon. I have never seen watermelon grow this energetically. <laughs> it's beautiful. Now I do see some pests. I just saw a squash beetle fly by and land again. Where'd it go? These guys look like ladybugs. They look like ladybugs, but they are not. They are more closely related to the Mexican bean beetle, which causes a lot of destruction in bean crops. But this one causes a lot of trouble in squash and cucurbits. So we don't... Oops. Ah! Normally I just pinch them inside the leaf to smush them. Because I don't like smushing. Here, got it. All right. So... I do manually remove pests and I take the tendrils that are trying to grow outside of the bed and wrap them back in just like that. Nothing fancy, just every day or two I have to do this or they will take over the rest of the garden. But there are some wonderful large watermelon in here they're kind of hard to see i especially have to make sure i stay vigilant on this side of the garden where the bird netting is because if those tendrils get a hold of the bird netting they don't let go so yeah and then over here where is it right in here is our biggest watermelon so far and it's looking really good i'm watching closely the tendril and the petiole at the top to see if they start to die back. And it's looking pretty good so far. These winter squash are growing beautifully. Growing very fast. We just planted these from seed. You can see how well they're doing. This is really cool. I'm really enjoying watching this late season growth on things and what a wonderful delight this kids teepee garden is look how gorgeous their corn is way better than mine <laughs> you guys win their peanuts are doing great they are blooming you can see down in here see a little peanut bloom down there that's a little peanut plant and there are vines that i keep trying to get to go in the right direction. Now the kids planted so many different things in here that I will not know what it is until it produces fruit. We are seeing some of the cucumber mosaic virus on a lot of things. Ooh, and freshly hatched some things, good or bad. We don't smush unless we know for sure. So I'm gonna have to get a closer look at this and try to see if I can identify that. This is a giant pile of holy basil that was completely over this pathway. Now the roselle has fallen down <laughs> into the path. 
So still can't get through right here. <laughs> but we got Oprah here and Roselle there. Even though they are in the same family, they produce a different type of fruit. Obviously, most of you are familiar with okra. And I never did thin them when I was going to, so overcrowded. And the roselle is going to be a bloom that we harvest the calyx of to create a nice tea. Over here, we have pulled out the squash plants. They were very far gone. You can see that the cherry tomatoes are pretty far gone too, but they're growing up the trellis. So I'm actually just going to leave them. Even though the bottom half of the plant looks dead, the top half isn't. It's still producing fruit. This entire path was completely laid over with the Thai basil. This Thai basil got almost as tall as me. So you can see how drastically I have cut. And this is just going to regrow. Look at all that basil. So we're going to dehydrate all this and have enough basil for a lifetime. Also growing on this trellis is our tiger melon and the leaves definitely have seen better days. So there is pest and disease all throughout this garden. It is not the best summer for a garden y'all. You can see my uh, tomatoes are a hot mess. It's uh, lots of blight on the lower plant and the tops of the plants are growing new blooms so it's really weird where half of the plant looks like you should pull it out but the other half is saying i got more life in me the cucumbers we planted on this trellis over the broccoli that never did anything is just now starting to grow okay you see lots of diseased leaves here I have been waiting to see if they were going to do anything before pulling them. I thought, well, let me give them a chance. Because I planted these in April, y'all. And I have not picked a single cucumber. You see that cucumber right there? That's the only one that has grown. And the, it just started to grow. So, And it just started to bloom. And it looks like it's outgrowing the disease. Who knows? Who knows? I might end up not getting much from them but i'd rather just let them go and see what they do over here this cucumber it's a burr gherkin and they're not as diseased but you can see they have some kind of pest issues it looks like maybe mites spider mites you see the light speckling on the leaf that's indicative of mite or thrip damage so I'm not applying any pesticides. I'm just letting Mother Nature take its course because this late in the season, there's just no way to keep up. It has been too hot and it has rained too much for me to do much of anything out here in this hot mess garden. But then, but then you find these little treasures. These little personal sized watermelon are growing finally they also did not grow until just now it is august i don't understand this has been a very strange gardening year but then these peppers y'all these peppers y'all look how tall i mean look at these look how tall they are they're almost up to my shoulder in places look at that insane and they're putting on tons of fruit so peppers they don't mind this hot wet summer um um 300,000 scoville <laughs> um uh i see one i'm afraid to pick it i'm afraid that it'll burn me that looks like a hot pepper, doesn't it? Just screams spicy. It says, I'm spicy. <laughs> now that could make a hot mess for somebody. I won't be eating them. I know these dragon tongue beans look like a hot mess too. And they are. But you know what? They're still producing beans. So, as long as they continue blooming and making new babies, 
we are picking 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 like crazy oh look i missed one i just picked these earlier when you got six canning jars full and you want a seventh one for a canner load and you run out to the garden and pick more beans mm -hmm. that's what i've been doing just the sheer amount of beans and tomatoes that i've been putting up for the winter has made all of these crazy unhealthy looking gardening all these unhealthy looking garden beds <laughs> has made it worth it because even if they're not in perfect health and they have some pest and disease they're still producing plenty of food for our family and we do try to stay on top of it in the beginning of the season and to be honest it gets really hot here in Georgia and I end up spending less and less time outside during the day for health reasons and I just do what I can every day and if it means that the only thing I can do is harvest it to put it away for the winter then so be it there'll be some weeds and some pests that haven't been addressed but all in all we're still getting good food right Cleo right Cleo huh what are you doing so these were tomato plants I planted late, so they don't look as bad, but I never did put a cage on them, so I need to do that right away, especially that one. I can already see the leaves on the bottom starting to get blighty looking. This bed is going to be carrots any day now. Um, planning on putting those seed in this week. The kale is still triumphing, even though there's some caterpillars in them. We just make sure that we don't eat the caterpillars the anise hyssop looks like it has fallen over since the last rain and it hasn't done that all season and there are way less insects on them so i think they're going to be going to seed and i'm not so sure i want them to seed as heavily as they did last fall so i actually might cut off some of these heads to collect the seed and be able to use it where i want to put them our edible winged sumac berries are at their prime for those of you that like to forage these little berries make a wonderful lemonade drink you just soak them in your water and it tastes delicious mm. Mm. very good they're very high in vitamin c so they're very citrus tasting very citrus tasting these ground cherries I've already cut back and allowed to regrow, but they look funny. So I'm probably going to go ahead and replace them with fall plants. And just yesterday, I cut out the giant ground cherries that were right here. You can see the husk and the stems still in the ground. Um, they were stunting these poor little pepper plants. So we're going to probably fill in with some cabbage or something later on when we plant out our fall veggies really the peppers have done amazing so no complaints on the peppers this year they did really really well these are some spicy ones these ones were stunted because they were covered but the ones behind them that weren't covered are huge so yeah i haven't been maintaining the garden that well but as the season starts to change and the temperatures start to lighten up I will have more opportunities to come out here and clean up for our fall garden. So that'll be good. And in the meantime, I will do a little here and there. Even if it's just turning the watermelon into the watermelon bed. <laughs> and cutting some basil. <laughs> so whatever I can do, I do. But having good food on our dinner table every night from this garden has been the best blessing of all. So even if it is a hot mess garden, it's my hot mess and I love it.